Just about two months ago, Oregon, simply put, was on fire. Several large wildfires broke out following a strong windstorm. And in Clackamas County? I mean, we had 144 fires, working fires, from Monday night at September 7th at 6 p.m. until noon on uh, the 10th, Thursday the 10th. We had 144 working fires. And so we had multiple grass, wild, tree fires, structure fires as well. Clackamas County Fire Operations Chief Nick Brown tells me it was some of the most difficult days of his career. But he summed it up with one word. You know, for me, uh, gratitude comes to mind. And it's gratitude for the communities that uh, we serve. And most importantly, gratitude for uh, the firefighters of Clackamas Fire. You know, uh, I've never seen a team come together like that and give 110% like the, uh, the firefighters did. I had crews going 72 and 96 hours straight and asking to be put back into the fight. And um, just I've just never never experienced that before. So it's, um, gratitude's the word I, I'll have to use. And then the citizens rallying together to uh, get us what we needed as far as logistical supplies or helping get into the fight. And then our strategic partners with, with CCSO and the county and uh, the state. I mean, it, it just was a, it was a collaborative effort. And so gratitude is what comes to mind. Chief Brown was one of the leaders the day that the call came over the radio for firefighters to abandon the fight. He explains why that happened. Yeah, that was uh, that was Thursday. We turned over the, uh, the the fire to the state at that point and the feds. The information that we got in from the from the state's fire behavior analysis was that, uh, that we were going to have uh, a recipe for a plume driven fire event, right? And well, I know what a plume driven event is, but I asked specifically, what, what does this mean? And the answer that we got back from the state was apocalyptic fire behavior. And as an operations chief, uh, when I hear apocalyptic fire behavior, I instantly, I go to uh, my people that are on the front lines and I go to a uh, public that is potentially back there fighting the fight. And so um, as we looked at each other, uh, we made the call, okay, we're going to pull back. And we're going to draw the line in the sand of where we're going to stop this thing if that happens. And so we pulled our crews off the front lines and asked that they pull any uh, citizens that they see as well. And, and we strategically placed companies uh, in the city of Estacada as well as off of Highway 211 and at the training center to, to be able to mitigate in the event that we had what was projected to have happen. And thankfully, it went the other way. It, uh, it went to an inversion versus a plume-dominated fire. He tells us it was a pretty traumatic situation for a lot of people. Obviously, not only the citizens that had to evacuate, but the firefighters that had to do the same thing. A lot of them kissed their loved ones, uh, their families goodbye, and, and went out to the fight knowing that, that their uh, husband or wife uh, and kids were going to have to evacuate themselves. There's uh, there's countless amounts of firefighters that were in level three evacuations that uh, left their homes and left their families to, to better serve the community. And um, you get a little emotional when you think about that, you know, uh, giving your loved ones a kiss goodbye and, and your home and then going to fight the fight. Um, it's That it was pretty crazy. Chief Brown wanted it to be known that a lot of people came together to accomplish a lot of good work and saved a lot of homes. The biggest thing with this for me uh, is that if you really, really look at it um, and you take a step back and you look at the fact that we had this natural disaster where we had 135,000 acre fire bearing down on, on our local communities. We had a 1,500 acre fire bearing down on our local communities. We had a 450 acre fire that had the potential of running multiple directions to bear down on multiple uh, small towns and cities. We had um, uh, all of these fires going at the same exact time. And to see my firefighters uh, give 110% and to see my mutual aid partners in the city of Portland and Tualatin Valley and Malala and Canby and to see resources from the state where their own backyards are on fire rally together and to see local citizens rally to support the firefighters and bring these heavy, heavy machinery 
and all do this in the name of trying to stop this natural disaster that we had bearing in. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, we had thousands of homes and thousands of lives that potentially could have been lost. And we didn't lose one life. We didn't lose one life. We lost a few a few structures, and that's super, super hard. But we didn't lose one life. And our brothers and sisters in blue, CCSO, and local law enforcement, racing to do evacuations, partnering with, with the county. It's just was a team effort. And uh, I do not think we would have had the outcome that we had, the successful outcome that we had, and the fact that we did not lose thousands of homes and we didn't lose any lives. Any, any life if, uh, if you didn't have that team effort. And so it, uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty humbling, to be, to be quite honest. That's Clackamas County Fire Operations Chief Nick Brown looking back on the wildfires this past summer in Clackamas County.